we're going to deviate a little bit now from our investigation of atomic structure to introduce the most important numerical concept in chemistry, and that is the mole. It might seem weird that we're stopping halfway through our discussion of atomic structure to do this, but we need to bring the mole in as quickly as possible because when we get back to our discussion of atomic structure, and in particular the role of the electrons, we're going to very quickly start talking about things in terms of per mole, which means absolutely nothing if you don't know what a mole is. But we couldn't talk about a mole until we knew about relative mass. Well, anyway, um, back to the whole mole thing. Some of you who've had chemistry before might be groaning because mole can be introduced in a way that's really, really nasty. But it's actually, as a concept, it's extremely easy and it's something with which you're actually very familiar, at least as far as the mathematical concepts. If I was teaching this class live, I would have walked in and I'd have said, oh, we're going to have this really tough, nasty quiz right now. Most of you won't be able to do it, but we got to do it to get over it to introduce the class. And I'd go on winding the whole class up and then I'd say, right, the first question is how many eggs in seven dozen eggs? And the class always used to look at me like I was going nuts and so on. But if you understand the concept of a dozen meaning 12, then you understand the concept of a mole. OK, we use a dozen for 12 really as an easy way to count eggs. Instead of going into a grocery store and there being a big basket full of eggs there and you count out one, two, three, you have them collected in chunks of dozens or half dozens and so on, okay? Because it's just something used to count eggs easily. Well, a mole is exactly the same idea. It is used to count the number of submicroscopic particles easily. Now, because submicroscopic particles are rather smaller than eggs, in order to count them easily, we need a bigger number than a dozen and a mole, the number we use, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. But if you can just think about it, that every time you hear mole, you replace it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 in exactly the same way that any time you heard the word dozen, you'd replace it mentally by 12. Or century, you'd replace it by 100. Or pair, P-A-I-R, you'd replace it by 2. Seven dozen eggs? Well, that's seven times 12. You think a dozen, that's 12. So seven dozen, seven times 12 is 84. Seven moles of neon atoms. Well, what's a mole? 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So that's seven times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, or 4.21 times 10 to the 24 neon atoms. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why a mole is so wonderful is it doesn't matter what we're talking about. A mole is a mole is a mole. So seven moles of neon atoms are 4.21 times 10 to the 24 neon atoms. Seven moles of water molecules would be 4.21 times 10 to the 24 water molecules. Now let's make the maths a little bit harder, shall we? Instead of talking about how many dozen we've got and going to number eggs, let's say I've got 30 eggs. How many dozen is that? Well, I think you would all rather quickly say, well, 30 eggs, to get it in dozen, we divide 30 by 12, so that's two and a half dozen. Well, same idea. If I've got this many HCl molecules, 8.14 times 10 to the 23, how do I turn it into moles? Well, now I know the number of molecules, I want it number of moles, so I would divide that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 to find out that's 1.35 moles of HCl. A little bit harder maths, but exactly the same thing. You can do the maths in your head when it's eggs and dozen. You can set it up in your head and do it on your calculator when we're talking about submicroscopic particles, whether those be molecules or atoms and moles. Now, I like to sort of formalize things a lot of times in a little equation. And a particular one we're looking at here is big N, where that's the number of particles, is little n, which is the number of moles, times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So if I know, for example, I have seven moles, it's seven times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, just like we did here. If I know how many molecules I've got and I want to turn it into moles, hopefully your maths is good enough to see that you will divide both sides by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 to get the number of moles. 
Which brings us on to an extremely important extension of the idea of a mole, and that is the molar mass, the mass of a mole, not the mass of a tooth. Okay, And one mole of any pure substance weighs the relative mass in grams. It's a nasty definition, but very easy to apply. Hydrogen atom. Here's hydrogen on the periodic table. Its relative mass, 1.008. Let's be friendly and call it 1.0. What that tells us is that one mole of hydrogen atoms weighs 1.0 grams. Right? Relative mass is 1. One mole weighs that. So the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.0 grams per mole. In other words, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 excuse me, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 hydrogen atoms weigh one gram. Oxygen periodic table says that relative mass, let's call 15.99916, shall we, as we're all friends here. What does that tell us? That tells us that one mole of oxygen atoms weighs 16.0 grams. The molar mass of oxygen is 16.0 grams per mole. Or in other words, 6.02 times 10 to 23 oxygen atoms weigh 16 grams. Most of the time, we're not going to talk about the mass of atoms. We're going to talk about the mass of molecules, okay, or similar. So H2O. Well, let's think about H2O, right? We've got two hydrogens, each of which weighs one. We've got one oxygen, which weighs 16. So therefore, an H2O molecule has a relative mass of 18, 2 plus 16. What does that tell us? That tells us that the molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. One mole of H2O weighs 18 grams. In other words, one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, H2O molecules weigh 18 grams. So if I got 18 grams of water, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. We'll come back to that in a minute on the next slide. One more example. NaCl, as we will see later on, you can't really talk about molecules of NaCl. You talk about formula units of NaCl. But the formula unit of NaCl is going to have a mass of 23, 22.99 is 23.0, right? Plus 35.5, can round up 35.45 to 35.5. So an NaCl has a relative mass of 58.5. That means the molar mass of NaCl is 58.5 grams per mole. One mole of NaCl weighs 58.5 grams, or in other words, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 NaCls weighs 58.5 grams. Okay, relative mass from the periodic table, turn it into the atomic mass, or in this case up here, the molecular mass. Go from that relative mass to the mass of one mole, and that tells you how to go from these number of submicroscopic particles to the mass. Let's exemplify that in two steps, shall we? The first step. The idea of mass to moles, and as we'll see in a minute, moles to mass, is again something that's extremely familiar to you in everyday life. For example, if I told you a bag of sugar weighs three kilograms, how much do four bags of sugar weigh? Well, you'd say, well, if one's three, four of them, four times three is 12 kilograms of sugar. You would not have the slightest issue in figuring that out, right? Well, if one mole of water weighs 18 grams, Four moles of water would weigh four times 18 or 72 grams of water. We can flip it the other way around. Let's say I've got seven kilograms of sugar. I need seven kilograms of sugar. Well, that's seven divided by three or 2.33 bags of sugar. OK, just take that relationship between the bags and the mass and use it in a way that should be common sense to you. Same way, if I've got 45 grams of water, well, I don't want grams, I want moles, for example. So I would say that one mole of water weighs 18 in the same way that one bag of sugar weighs 3 and divide 45 by 18 to get 2.5 moles of water. We can measure mass and we can turn it into moles. We can go from moles to mass, mass to moles. Again, giving you a little equation, what we've done here as we said, the total number of grams will be the number of moles multiplied by the mass of one mole, the molar mass, or to put it in symbolic form, G for grams, N for moles, MM, not a wrapper, not a type of sweetie, but molar mass. 
putting that together a little bit further, counting by Wayne. OK, I don't know if you still do this, but it used to be when you go to fairgrounds, for example, and there would be a big jar of, let's say, well, in my days, you called them Smarties. Nowadays, I guess you call them M&Ms. Right. And so the, the contest would be how many M&Ms are there in this big jar? Now, of course, you would just look at that and you would guess the way that the uh, fair owner would know what the right answer was is they wouldn't weigh count out every single m and m that would take forever but what they would do is they would weigh the total number of m and m's that they have okay and then say figure out how much 10 m and m's weighed and then by knowing how much 10 m and m's weighed and knowing how much the whole weight was they could figure out the number of m and m's they're counting by weighing and we do exactly that same idea when we are counting number of submicroscopic particles by weighing how many water molecules in 36 grams of water, for example? Well, we know two relationships. Grams is moles times molar mass. And number of molecules, number of submicroscopic particles is moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Redoing the question to get the right colors. We want molecules, that's green. Number of molecules is big N. We got the mass, 36 grams, that's in that kind of brownie orange color, grams. So what can we do? Well, the first thing we do is we say we've got 36 grams. Molar mass of water, because that's what we're dealing with, is 18 grams per mole. Plug those two things into our little formula. And we get 36 grams is number of moles times 18. Rearrange it a little bit, divide both sides by 18. So we get we have two moles. So 36 grams of water is two moles. Now let's take that up here. Number of molecules is number of moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Take that two moles that we just calculated here, multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And we have 1.20 times 10 to the 24 molecules of water. How many water molecules in 36 grams? Well, we can't sit and count them, but by turning 36 grams into the number of moles, because we know how much a mole weighs, and we know that a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, we can get the number of molecules. This is the mass of M and M's. This is the mass of a known number of M and M's. We can figure out how many M and M's we have. Putting it in a little visual way, we've got a box for particles, we've got a box for moles, we can relate number of particles to number of moles with this relationship here. We have another box to grams, we can relate moles and grams using this relationship here. And now we can see how we did it. We had 36 grams, which we turned to moles. Once we had the moles, we can go along here turn it into particles. This is the start of something we're going to build up a little bit this term, but mostly next term of a roadmap that relates all kinds of nice quantities that you need to calculate in chemistry. And indeed, one of the uh, corny things that an old friend of mine said was all roads lead to moles. Mole is a really important concept in chemistry. Mole is a very simple concept. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23.